oh god. My bird obsession has gone too far that I've made myself into a bird now. Michelle here and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm working on a crochet project with yarn from Hobie. All right, so in my last video, I was wearing the exact same sweater and I thought, you know what? I started that video. I might as well just start this video on the same day. Welcome to past, Michelle. I just did an unboxing of my Hobie yarn. So if you haven't watched that video, definitely go check that video out before you watch this one. I'm actually working on a campaign with them called No Shades of Grey. And basically because, you know, January, February, very gloomy months. Spring is like right ahead. We just finished all the holidays and we're getting right back into our regular lives and it's just you know a little bit dreary their challenge is to make something with super colorful fun yarn to make something that if you look at it you're not going to be sad you're going to be happy looking at it let me just dive into the yarn i got even though i did show you the yarn i got before but i thought i would do a little recap i picked out four colors these are the colors i'm going with I mean, you can kind of see where I'm going with this project because clearly I love the 70s and 80s and these colors are like right there. The yarn that I chose is the Friends Cotton 8 out of 8, obviously from Hobie Yarn. And the colors that I chose was this one here, which is pistachio, chocolate, whiskey, and a pale yellow. My plan for this project is to make a hexagon is to make a hexagon sweater. I've done the math and I think I have enough to make that sweater or a cardigan. It's a cardigan. And that's what I'm gonna do. I was kind of going back and forth whether or not I wanted to make a vest or a cardigan because I don't know if I'd have enough for a cardigan, so I'd have to make a vest, but I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm just gonna throw caution to the wind and make the cardigan, at least make half the cardigan. If I make half of it, then I'll know if I have enough yarn to make the other half. And if I know I don't have enough yarn to make the other half, then I will undo what I did and then do a vest. I've never actually used Hobie yarn before, so I'm really excited to use it. I love how soft it is, and I've never actually made anything with cotton. I made a few like coasters and cup cozies with cotton before, and they're okay. But the cotton that I normally go with, it's just nothing special. It's usually like that really, it's kind of like kind of scratchy and it's kind of like dense and there's like no movement to it. But this one, it's super soft. And and it looks really nice and easy to use. My plan is I'm just gonna start making it and we'll see where it goes. And of course, like my typical YouTube videos, you know, the typical crochet journeys that I have, like my ups and then my falling off the cliffs down. <laughs> But you know, everything always works out in the end. So we'll see where this goes. I'm gonna try to make a cardigan. If that does not work, we're gonna make a vest. Either way, there'll be a finished project at the end of this video. And I feel like my thumbnail will kind of let you know where that went. Without further ado, I think I'm gonna start making this project. I'm finally starting this project. I just finished my last project and now I'm starting this one. So I rolled one up. This is about it that you get from here. I have really high hopes that this is gonna be enough to make this cardigan. I do have a plan. We'll, we'll see how far this goes. We'll see how far I get. And then I did save the extra green for the cuffs and the trim. If I can do the trim, I have three of each color for per side. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna go for it. All right, so this is how far I've gotten so far. I think I might do another row of green before I finish for the night. But yeah, I really like how these colors are looking and I'm gonna do it in an order of like green, orange, pastel yellow, and then brown, and then back to green, orange, etc. Technically, it could be made for a baby at this point because how do you do this? You go like, those two go together. It's half a baby sleeve. You know, if I wanted to make it for my cat, I just just have to make one more half, but I, it's for me, so yeah. And brown is the most used color so far, and this is still from the same ball of yarn, so it's not going too bad. Originally, what I was gonna do is I was gonna do like one row of each color, but then when I did the one row, I'm like, I kind of like the two, because then it looks like it's one row instead of it just being like half, if if that makes sense. So I really like how this looks. I will get back to y'all with an update either again if something horribly goes wrong because it probably will or i finished one side so we will see it's up in the air right now this is how far i got to last night and i'm gonna start working on it again today now for some reason in my little head i thought that i only had to do like two patterns a pattern basically doubled itself let me just show you how big that would be tiny i'm not making this for a child this is gonna be for me so i'm gonna have to add a third one well i mean a third i mean like the four colors three times. So I have it one, I have it two, it's gonna have to be three, it's gonna be oversized, but that's exactly what I want. Also yarn wise, right when I got to this 
orange here. I had to start the second skein. The yarn's taking me really far. I will be able to get both sides done with less than three skeins of yarn for each color. I don't know how this happened, but I somehow only put one double crochet in there when I needed to put three, which means I would have to take apart everything that I had just worked on. And I'm very, very, very close to the end of the green to fix it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. How did this happen? Because I really don't want to take it apart because the wider you get, the longer it takes to make. It takes me well over an hour, around an hour, just to do like two, two rows. Because it's so, it's basically the size of a blanket now. <sighs> it happened again. Oh. All right, I think the problem is that I'm watching TV and while I'm watching TV, I'm just not paying attention. In between each stitch, I'm chaining one. So I think the thing is, is that in my head, I think I'm chaining one and moving on. I, that has to be the problem. The last row now, and this is how much yarn I have. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be enough. I'm just going to go for it. It's going to take me another hour to do this to figure it out if uh, that's going to be enough. But for y'all, it's going to be about two seconds. Two seconds later. It's not enough to finish everything. My plan of attack now is that I want the double, like the two rows of brown to be on the front of the cardigan, on the bottom of the cardigan, and on the cuffs of the cardigan. So I don't need it on the back seam and I don't need it on the shoulder seam. Because originally I was going to do it and then I was going to put a green in, but no, I'm not going to do that anymore. And that's okay. Look at how much I made with that yarn. And this is one half, by the way. I still have more yarn that I could actually make it, but then that would mean it'd be less yarn for me to use for the other half. So I have to do that knowingly, and that is why I split up the yarn. So half was for this, half is for the other, and then I got a ton more green. I'm going to figure that out and probably finish crocheting this tomorrow because it's around nine o'clock and I'm tired, and I don't want to start making mistakes because I start making mistakes when I'm tired. All right, we're doing a check-in of my progress so far. The other day, I did finish one half. This yarn, I have to say, blew me away at how much I actually got. Like looking at these little tiny skeins, I did not think that they were going to like last. So I was basically stressing. The entire time I was crocheting this, I was stressing out because I'm like, what if I don't have enough? Like basically, what if I don't have enough? Like what's going to happen? Like I know I'm going to have to take it apart and make a vest, but we don't have to make a vest because I do have enough. The only thing is, is that I did not order enough brown. I will have enough orange. I will have enough white. I will have so much green that I will be able to make other projects with it, which I'm really excited about because this green is like one of my new favorite colors. I love this pistachio green. It's gorgeous. But with the brown, I did not have enough to do two rows. So like how each one, like two, 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 I did not have enough to do two on here, but I do have a plan. So what I ended up doing is instead of, well, my sister actually gave me the idea because I was like looking at it and being like, I don't know how to calculate this. So she's like, just do one row and then fill it in after. And what I mean fill it in later is when I connect it up at the top like this, it will technically be two rows. I save myself there. And then on the back as well, when this one gets connected to the other panel, there will be only two rows. Now, what I do want to do is for the front and on the bottom, I still really, really want to have that double border because I will be adding like a green border. That's still happening. Here's, here's the thing. Making one of these, it's so easy. It's so easy. If you know how to make a traditional granny square, you're going to know how to make this because that's basically all it is. But the, the bigger you make this and the more rows you go up, the longer it takes you to do it. So just keep that in mind. It's taking a lot longer than I thought. The one panel is done. Let me just show you how this is going to look half on. I do have some clips, clamps. The clamps. All right, so let me just show you what it will look like, well, what half of it looks like. All right, so let me just clamp this and show you what I'm talking about. Basically, this is what it looks like. And then what you do is you take these two corners and you fold them together. And there you go. You got half of a cardigan. I do this. All right, so this is what's kind of looking like. All right, so it is actually gonna come down a little bit farther. I just don't want it to like fall like right off of me. Probably like that. So you kind of see how far it goes down. It's gonna be like really baggy. I feel like more like, you know, groovy kind of. <laughs> Maybe the aesthetic that I would call it. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking the same green and I'm gonna be putting a border here 
at the bottom, the very end here, I am going to make some cuffs and I'm going to like cinch them in. So they're going to be like very billowy here, but it's going to like fit nice and snug against my hand. And that's all going to be with this green color. I really love these colors together. They just look so good together. Look at my arms all the way up here. This is all just fabric. This is definitely going to be a very oversized look and more oversized than I am used to. I'm trying something different. I'm doing something else. We'll see how it all goes. So far, I am loving it. Yeah, hopefully next week I'll be able to get it done. Maybe? Maybe? I don't know. I'll update you when I make some more progress. Or make another mistake, because you know that's usually when I update. I've done something right, or something has gone horribly wrong. Um, so... Um... Oh, I wish I had better news for y'all. But I don't right now? I don't know how... I don't know how it happened. But I'm supposed to have six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. And for some reason, I was thinking five, five sides. And so if you look at this, one, two, three, four, five, five sides. Mm -hmm. I folded it. I'm like, oh, like a little tiny sweater. And then I saw this. This is not supposed to be a triangle. It's supposed to come down flat and then I have a curve, which means that everything that I've worked on in the last few days, besides this little green part, has to be taken apart. I want to say it's fine, but I'm not happy about it because I don't want to take it apart. Where I went wrong is that there's supposed to be two, one, two, one, two. And you see this? That's supposed to be two. And there's one in there. And because there's one in there, I didn't think of that as a corner. And because it's not a corner, I've been making a straight line and been doing a straight line where this is actually supposed to be a corner part. Fun. So that means I have to now take it all apart, take it all apart. At least I looked at it right here. Could you imagine if I would have gotten the whole thing done and then realized? I would have been real mad at myself. It is what it is. Things happen. Six sides. Six sides to a hexagon cardigan, not five. I did it. It took all my hard work apart. And this is probably because I was watching television while I was doing it. It is my fault, but it's also the TV's fault. So I'm going to blame TV right now. That's that's who's to blame because I wasn't paying attention because of the TV. I've already seen how I messed up royally and it's it was a bummer. It was a bummer because that was like two days of work down the drain. I've I've come back to where I had left off when I discovered that I did it wrong. But at least I caught it at this stage. Could you imagine if I finished the whole second side and then I went to go put it together and I was like, what's this? That would have been so annoying. There's six sides to a hexagon, but for some reason I'm like five. Not too much of an update. I just have to finish this side and then we can put things together. We can start you know, working on the trim and everything. And to be honest, working on this side, it's a lot less stressful. Cause the first side, I'm like, I'm gonna run out of yarn. I'm not gonna have enough yarn. So it was just that stress in me making this entire thing. And now I can just kind of like sit back and relax, but not relax too much because then you make colossal mistakes. But I can kind of like just sit back and relax and just continue the pattern and know where it's gonna stop. So that I am gonna be working on today. By the way, I would have been close to finishing this side had not all of that occurred. Here's the thing, going into a crochet project, at one point you are going to make a huge mistake and that is what I expect. And that's fine because I'm expecting it to happen at one point along the way. And it did. And hopefully that is the last problem or major problem. Other problems are definitely going to occur and I'm going to get frustrated, but hopefully that was the biggest problem that happened. I can move on now. I really, really hope so. One side, two side. The two sides are done. I'm going to be doing a second row on certain ends, but I want to put it together before I do that to know what ends that I have to do instead of me you know, messing up and having to undo it and, and redo it. So I am going to be attaching them together today. This is the shape, it's a T. So it goes like this and then down. And then this is uh, the arm. And then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be stitching these two together all the way down. And then I'll be doing it on both sides. They're getting attached today. The pieces are done and they are now put together. It's, it's everything is attached and technically yes i could have i could have just stopped could have just stopped right here and been like it's done i'm gonna move on now but no i have to be extra and i have to add ribbing and a border which i'm gonna do this is what the sleeve looks like you know without the cuff and i was kind of looking at it and i'm like i kind of like how it's like kind of swooshy and it's giving those like groovy vibes and i was like contemplating should i just stop but then last night, I'm like, I have some energy. I have some time. Let's put a cuff on this bad boy. And I am 100% on team cuff. Okay, this 
This is gorgeous. This, I love it. It was my vision from the start. I did it. It's amazing. So yeah, I will be putting the other cuff on here. Now here's the thing, if I were to have done it where this was more of like a bell sleeve, absolutely love the idea of a bell sleeve. This is where it's at. Another thing about this that I was kind of thinking is I might have made it a little bit too long. Put that down for a second. Like, as you can see, it is long. I would have loved to have stopped it here. Like, I think that, you know, I'm gonna roll that up too. If I would have stopped it like this, I think this length would have been really cute. A lot of my sweaters are this length, but here's the thing. This is my first time making one of these guys. So I just had to like follow the pattern of how to make a hexagon cardigan. Hexagon granny square cardigan. So I had to follow that to see where it is. This is the first time I've ever made one and it's surprisingly going going well. What I'm gonna do today is obviously cuff this and then I am gonna be doing the border. I did do the double brown. You can't really even see that it is double. It is a heavier cotton so it is kind of pulling down I'm fine with it. So you can't really tell that it is double, but there is a double brown here. And then I am gonna be taking the green and, you know, this green, and uh, doing the border. So I wanna do the border all here, and I wanna do the border all along the bottom. I was not able to do a double brown on the end of the sleeves, but I don't think it really would have made a difference because of how I had to do the ribbing. I feel like the brown would have been kind of squished anyways, regardless if I'd done like double or not double, it's fine. But yeah, so that's where I am today. I'm hoping to get this done by the end of the week. It is Tuesday. I confidently, somewhat confidently, feel like I can finish this in the next few days. So we'll see how that goes. Last night, I was able to finish the second little cuff on the sleeve. And then I quickly remembered how it takes me forever to do ribbing on the side. For the cuffs and the normal ribbing that I do like on the bottom of my sweaters, it goes by a little bit quicker just because I go up, I go back down, and then I slip stitch into five, and then I go back up and down slip stitch into five. So I'm really not doing as much crocheting because I'm really bunching it together. Whereas this one, I can't really bunch it together because I don't want it to be bunched together. I'm only, I'm going up and down and slip stitching into two and then going back up and down. So this is taking a really long time. I'm almost at the top where the back of my neck is going to be. But then I realize I have to go like all the way back down and then I have to go around the entire bottom of this cardigan. Now I know, I know I'm not going to get it done tonight. It's the next day. I know all the shots look exactly the same because it's, it's the same project. But I'm kind of concerned about this corner here. You know, I've gotten like all the way up to here and I don't really want to take all this out because that's like a lot of work. But I don't like how it's buckling, you know? Like I'd rather it just be flat. Y you see what I mean? So I don't know. I think I might have to take all this apart. Sure, I might not want to do it now, but when it's all done, I might look at it and be like, I should have done that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, this is just, it's heartbreaking because I did so much work, but it's fine. It's for the greater good. <laughs> yeah, so that's just the tip. If you're going to make one of these is just figure out what you want to do with your border because right here it's such a sharp corner, kind of rounding, it's, it's doing that. I just don't like that, so yeah. I did take it apart and what I ended up doing is up here I would do a slip stitch into two and then move my way back, but what I did here instead, I slip stitched into one, went up, down, slip stitched into that same stitch, like that stitch I would go twice, so I would do two ribs up and down in one stitch. I think I did that four times and look how nice and smooth that looks. Here's the thing, I thought I was being productive when I started. Instead of starting like right here on the, the edge, I started lower and then was going like this, which means that this work that I did here, that I took apart all of this to recreate this, I would have to replicate that over here. Now, I don't know if y'all know this. It's not impossible, but it's not fun to take it apart from where you started. From where you end, you can just rip that thing out and it just goes. But when you start, I was trying, you can't just pull, okay? You can't just pull it and have it unwind because it's all knotted because it's crochet. I would have to painstakingly remove every single loop and, and it, it would honestly be easier for me to undo everything that I did and quicker than for me just to take this little part out. So here's, here's what I'm gonna do. Love it or hate it, I'm gonna cut it out. I've done this before. I somewhat know what I'm doing, but I am gonna cut this yarn out, leave it here, 
with like a long tail. I'll just do that and then um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's when it's done. That's what it looks like. Yeah, so it is it is fixable. Should I have just taken the whole thing apart? Yes. Yes, I should have. It is what it is. It's fine. I don't care. Also, this is so long that it's at the bottom that I doubt like it's really going to be the main focus. It's it's done. I finished it. This is right where I cut it. You know, we just won't talk about what it looks like on the inside because it's on the inside. And we don't need to worry about that. We just need to look at the pretty outside. Unless you're really looking for it, you're not really going to notice it. So I think it's okay. But I can't believe that I, I finished this project. So now I have the daunting task of going inside and hiding all, all of the ends. Then once they're all Oh, once all the ends are nice and hidden away, I will be done it. It will be completed. So yeah, it's pretty much done. So I'm just going to hide the ends and then I will show you what it looks like. It's done. This is... This is, this is it. The No Shades of Grey campaign from Hobie was just a breath of fresh air considering that like, you know, I'm in the house a lot due to like the weather and how cold it is. So making something so bright and colorful in spring light just makes me want spring to be here already. Yeah, this challenge was like super fun to do. It was just super fun and I loved how it came out. Look at, look at this. I, I love these leaves. Did it take me a really long time to do? Yes, I, love these colors together. I am in love with these colors. I feel like I have bird wings. Oh God, my bird obsession has gone too far that I made myself into a bird now. It's okay, it's fine, I love it. I'm obsessed with these colors. And what's so funny is that this yellow is a little bit more yellow in person, but on camera, it's very off-white. And I love both of it because I think the off-white that I wanted, they didn't have it in stock. So I went with this yellow and it worked out. I think it is so cool looking. And I'm really glad I went with the cuffs. I think the cuffs just look nice because the whole thing is oversized and baggy, but then the cuffs kind of cinch it in just a little bit so it doesn't look too frumpy. For the length, I'm not used to long cardigans. Yes, back in, you know, the early 2000s, I wore long cardigans a lot. Like long cardigans were one of the staple pieces in my wardrobe. And then I just quit them. I wore them a lot actually, now thinking about it. And now I'm like, where do they all go? When I make my cardigans or my sweaters, they're always like this, this length. And I really like it. But in order for me to get the length I wanted in the sleeves, I had to keep going. I had to keep going. Thus why it's so long because it is a perfect square. So if I go like this, you see the hexagon shape that it makes. But from the front, it looks like a square, right? And then I did do the trim. Now let's just talk the logistics. With this here, it's a little trickster. It's a little trickster, these hexagon cardigans, because you'll get to about this brown here and you'd be like, wow, this is going so fast. When you get to like this white here, you're like, this is never ending. It's never going to get done. But you know, you just keep going and you end up with this. I wrote down how long it took me to make this. I did the math. In total of making both sides, the ribbing, connecting, hiding the ends, it took me 33 hours and 25 minutes. Give or take a little bit because sometimes I would stop and watch some TikToks for five minutes, but I did subtract like if I had dinner or I had lunch, I had minus 30 minutes, minus an hour. So I have that in my calculations, but you know, take it with a grain of salt. It took me roughly 33 hours to make this. Just to make the two sides without connecting them or anything, just two hexagon, these 23 hours, 23 hours to make these sides. Yeah, that's, that's a really long time. And then for the attaching everything to get, like attaching it down the back, attaching these cuffs and doing the trim that goes all the way around, 10 hours and 30 minutes. I feel like that's a really long time, but that's what my calculations say. So I'm not gonna argue with that. Oh, do you wanna go out? She wants to leave the room. It's time well spent. I made an item of clothing. So now let's go into how much yarn I actually used. Here's my, my yarn bag. For this project, I have several yarn bags for several projects. This is all the brown left. This is it. This is all the brown that I have left from this. Where I cut the corners is when I was connecting it. So when you connect the cut things together, right here, those are connected. This is the one hexagon folded over to make a T and I attached it in the brown. So instead of doing two layers in the brown, because what, what would happen is that you would have four rows of brown. Take that into account if you're also making this that I ended up just doing one row 
on the end there same here and then on the back as well you can see that I only did the one row on this side one row on this side and when I connected the two pieces together it made the two rows it's pretty much a mirrored image this is all the yellow that I have left it's a little bit more than the brown but that's it and then for the orange I have this so I have a whole skein of this left and this little tiny ball of orange so I can still do something with these colors so I still have this left for the green I actually have three full skeins of of this and also this is probably half a skein of yarn is, is is this right here so I do have the most green left and to be honest this green color is probably my favorite color on this so maybe I'll make a matching hat or something with a little bit of the orange and a little bit of the yellow to go with it but I still have a lot of green left and like you saw when I started this project which for me was a month ago so I can't really remember what happened in this month I'm really surprised how far this got me. The only thing I have to say that was a downside of using this yarn, this yarn is amazing. It's just, I probably should have went with their acrylic yarn and not with their cotton yarn because it heavy. It's pretty heavy, okay? You can kind of see how it's like draping and kind of weighing down. For like a cardigan like this, I would highly suggest, unless you don't mind the heaviness of it, it is a little heavy because it is cotton yarn, so it is weighing down a little bit. But to be honest, this would make such a good blanket so if you are interested in using this yarn which if you go to my description all the links to the yarn and everything that I used is down there it is a little heavier than acrylic so I personally like using acrylic yarn and I think if I were to make this again I would definitely go acrylic but the green color I wanted to use only came in the cotton I had to buy the cotton this would be the perfect blanket material like when you drape it around yourself and sit down it's just like a little hug it's so soft also this this cotton yarn is so soft and I had no problems with crocheting it. Usually sometimes when you crochet cotton yarn, the fibers of the yarn come loose a little bit. You try to put your hook in and then it's, it's just such a hassle. But this yarn, this yarn crocheted like a dream. Other than it being just a little bit heavy, I think it turned out pretty good, especially with all these colors. Like I think it looks really good. I am rambling for 17 minutes and this is going way too far. So we have to end this video. That will do it for this video. If you are new to my channel and you like sewing, crafting, thrifting, and of course, why not hit that subscribe button? You can also follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok. I think that is it. See y'all have a good day now.